Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, 
that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elijah shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have listened to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. 
Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is the Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord, thou hast been a refuge from one generation to another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to, uh, to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. He said, come. So Jesus got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I made a move a number of years ago from one town to another. At that time, I had two cats. Both cats had lived with me since they were kittens, and they lived a life that can only be described as luxurious. They ate the finest of cat foods. They had soft places all around the house to sleep, including my lap. They were caressed and given toys to play with when they cho chose to. I had never done anything to hurt or frighten them. But on moving day, I put them into their carriers and the howling began. And they howled at full volume and nonstop for the hour or so that it took me to get from one town to the other. Forgotten was the luxury that they had known. Despite never having been hurt or threatened by, by me, they now clearly believed that the end of the world was at hand and that I was the cause of it. They could have had a peaceful trip in the car, but no, things were strange and new and all they could see, feel, was their terror and rage at being thrown into this crisis. I remember that experience when I heard Jesus say to Peter in today's gospel, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Poor Peter, he has such a good heart and he loves Jesus so much. He has seen the feeding of the 5,000 the day before, and he has seen the love and power that Jesus radiates. And at first, he gets it. He understands the divine power and grace are what Jesus is offering to him and to all humankind. And he understands that he can ask for that gift and trust him. And he does ask. And he climbs out of the boat and as long as he keeps his eyes on Jesus, he walks on water. But then reason sets in and like Wiley Coyote when he runs off a cliff in the Roadrunner cartoons, he suddenly looks at what he's doing and where he is and he drops like a stone. We are like the disciples in the midst of a rough go. And we may not know where Jesus is. In the midst of suffering and death, in the midst of social upheaval and injustice, it is very hard to remember that we belong to a God who has nothing but love and compassion for us and who holds the whole universe in love. We may see only the crisis that surrounds us and we may hope only that we survive it. But if we do that, if we settle for just surviving this time, we are settling for so much less than what we could have. Peter could have asked Jesus to still the wind. He could have asked simply for survival and safety, but Peter asked for far more. He asked to be given divine power. He asked to walk on water and Jesus gave him that power. And here, in the midst of our scary and difficult time, what do we ask for? God has power and grace which can transform the world. And we can ask for that power. We can be given amazing gifts in this time of fear and loss to bring healing, hope, and reconciliation to a world that, for this moment, may be the most receptive to it. There is only one thing we must do. We must keep our eyes on Jesus. When our fear tries to narrow our horizon, we have to look into Jesus' eyes and see the hope and the promise that are there. If we ask for divine power, we have to trust that it will be given to us and we need to get out of the boat. We need to trust God's love with our feet and walk where we have never walked before. My cats got over their terror. We got to the new house and they saw that their comfy pillows had come too. 
and they discovered that the cat food in the new place was just as good as it had been in the old one. And so life resumed as normal. But then cats are cats, and we cannot expect them to have faith. But us, why do we doubt? Amen. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers in the name of our God, who always makes things work for good and is ever ready to reach out to save us, responding to Lord in your mercy with hear our prayer. We pray for the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jeffrey, our bishop, for the bishop's search and nomination committee, for Erica, our rector, Anne, our preacher today at 11, for our assisting priests and deacons and all in religious life, for Jeremy, our organist today, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Anglican cycle of prayer for the province of Rwanda and their Bishop Laurent, that God's people may never grow discouraged despite the winds and waves against them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our sure. prayer. For this parish family of atonement, for Margaret and Greg, our wardens, for our ushers and greeters at the nine o'clock mass, for Chris's continued weekly assistance with Zoom, for Aaron and Kate keeping us all in touch in our time away, that we all may listen to what God is saying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who experience the storms of daily life and all those in need of our prayers, remembering all on our parish prayer list, at today's Mass we pray in particular for all with COVID-19 and for David, Stephen, religious, Daniel, Peg, Larry, Betty, Carol Ann, Richard Thomas, religious, Stephen and Mark, priests, for the Chicago police officer hospitalized from the July 30th shooting, and the thousands injured and rendered homeless in the Beirut explosion last week, that they may be held up by the strong hand of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our families, friends, companions, and all whom we love, in thanksgiving for all celebrating birthdays this week, and for the wedding anniversaries of Larry and Kathy Fox, Jerry and Rosemary Gooden, and Gregory and Janine Singleton, that they may keep their eyes and attention on Jesus, who strengthens us and calms our chaos. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
for all those serving in our military, especially Andre, Rike, Owen, Terrence, and Max, for all wounded warriors, and for first responders in Chicago and throughout the country, that God will guide and protect them each day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all healthcare workers, and for those working to end the coronavirus pandemic that now has infected at least 5 million Americans, praying especially for Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, and Thomas. For all essential workers, especially Duane, Tommy, Scott, Rose, Cecil, and Robert, that God will give strength to those caring for the sick, courage to those who unknowingly may be exposed daily, and insight to those working on vaccines and cures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For greater civility in public discourses, that all people, media, and political leaders may show respect for their opponents, express their ideas and concerns thoughtfully, and work to promote the common good of society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are experiencing financial difficulties and the accompanying fears and anxiety of losing stability, that God will give them hope, open new opportunities for them, and guide them to the assistance that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Lawrence, Blessed Claire, Blessed Gregory the Great, and all the saints, let us offer our prayers for all who have died, remembering all in our prayers prayer list. At today's Mass, we pray in particular for Larry Peters, Bob Griefnow, Mary Louise Iverson, the sister of Helen Lambin, for Alex Nadell, and all who died in the Beirut explosion, those killed in the Air India crash, and all who have died of COVID-19, that God will lead them safely to the haven of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Peace everyone. Peace. God bless. Peace, Mother Peace. Mother the Lord. Hey, Alan. Hi, Daniel. Hello, Peace, Daniel. Daniel. Peace, 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 peace to everyone. Peace, peace, Greg. Peace, Daniel. Everyone. Oh, there's peace, Will. Will. Peace, Will. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Peace, peace good morning, James. Thank peace. you for playing for us today. Peace, Roy. Peace, everybody. Everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, all. It is so Peace good Jerry. To see you.
you all Thanks, to see your faces flashing by my screen this morning. Peace, my man. You on Zoom, a special welcome if you're visiting with us on Zoom for the first time. I hope that you'll join us each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock for this worship uh, online so that we can continue to gather in community uh, in this way. Um, contrary to popular opinion, we were not trying to evoke the sound of the storm with our um, Zoom music this morning. I know it's been a little um, tempestuous this morning with the music. I apologize for that. Um, I can tell you honestly that if Chris and Charlie and I had a nickel for every moment that we have spent trying to work on the audio, um, we would be able to put an elevator in the church right now, um, So, which I would love to be able to do, but unfortunately we're not getting the nickels for that. So uh, I apologize for that. We are continuing to work on that. Um, we've called an audible here and we're going to use a different kind of sound for the offertory hymn, which we hope will solve some of the problems. Um, and as I promise every week, we will continue to work on this um, and try to find a solution where we can hear what's happening in this room as beautifully at home as we can hear it here. So again, thank you for your patience. Speaking of Zoom, I will say that we are in need of people to help us with Zoom uh, here, especially on Sunday morning at coffee hour and also at this worship, but also during the week as well. So if you're a person who knows a little bit about Zoom, um, and is interested in helping us out. We're having a meeting this coming Wednesday at 5.30 to do a little training about Zoom uh, so that you could perhaps serve as a host for coffee hour or help us with one of these Sunday morning liturgies. Um, if you know, if you don't know how to do breakout rooms and things like that, but you can you know how to turn on Zoom and get yourself situated, um, this would be a great time uh, to reach out and serve. Um, it, it is a ministry team that I had never anticipated that we would need, but lo and behold, here we are needing a Zoom ministry team. So, uh, so we need to help. We really do need your, your service and your gifts. So please be in touch with me if you're interested in finding out more about that, or if you have Margaret Sullivan's contact information, you can be in touch with her. Or of course, you can always be in touch with the office, which is listed I'm there. Listed there on the line. We continue to use Zoom a lot for Bible study at noon on Thursdays, for evening prayer at 6.30 in the morning. We continue, uh, 6.30 in the evening, sorry, on Tuesdays. And of course, we continue to pray morning prayer every day, every day at 8.30 on Facebook Live and the Rosary at 9.30 also on Facebook Live. Uh, just to give you an update on our um, expanding our repertoire, opening the house, right? So we continue to have these Zoom worship uh, liturgies at 11 on Sunday. This morning we had our second worship service at nine o'clock. Uh, we had 47 people here to worship, which is about as full as we can be. We can have 50 at most. Um, it was a lovely worship service and we're asking people to feedback about what that service was like and the vestry and the reentry team and I and our staff will continue to evaluate um, how we're doing with that, how we might expand, how we might revamp. Uh, so if you have thoughts about that or if you've thoughts about Zoom worship, we'd love to hear them. Uh, it's very simple. You can simply send an email to feedback at atonementchicago.org, uh, which will be in the weekly email so that you can just send your email right to that email address so that we can get it and know exactly what it is that you're talking about. Um, EFM continues to gather people for their uh, uh, class in the fall. Remember, that's education uh, for ministry. And if you're interested in participating in that, I hope you'll be in touch with Helen Clavitter. If you don't have her contact information, again, just send an email to the office and we'll be happy to send that along to you. Most of these things go out in our weekly email, so if you're someone sitting there and you're not getting those weekly emails, again, I hope you'll reach out because this has become a prime way for us to communicate to one another during this time. It's really the main way that we're sharing information with one another, so we'd love to get you on that email list if you are not already there. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention is um, as we're uh, <laughs> struggling a little bit with the music, um, we are Nonetheless, extremely grateful to have Jeremy McElroy with us this morning. You can see him on your screen. Jeremy, I promise you, is playing beautifully here. I don't know what it sounds like at home, but here it sounds great. We're working on that. Um, Charlie's taking two weeks of well-earned vacation, and we are, as always, blessed to have Jeremy to come in and play so beautifully and to be such a trooper in willing to work with the sound that is happening this morning. So thank you, Jeremy. We're always glad to have you. Um, and the last thing I'll say is that... Uh, we all have been um, horrified, I think, by the images that have come out of Beirut after the explosion this week. If you're looking for a way to help, 
The American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem has set up a donate page on their website, um, which I'm hoping that Aaron will be able to put in the chat for you now so that you can see that. Um, if not, I'm not seeing it come up, but if not, you can simply Google American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. That is the diocese that encompasses Beirut, um, and they are a good way to make sure that the money that you're giving is getting to the people who are really in need. Um, I hope that you will continue to keep the people of that city in your prayers and their families who live abroad. Um, and I commend to you an article that I saw this morning on the BBC, um, which was a man, an Orthodox priest, a Greek Orthodox priest, um, showing the video of his church, which was just a, a little ways away from the, the center of the explosion. And uh, you can see the doors and the windows of the nave get blown out, the pews get moved, um, you can see the dust roll in. Uh, but he said that when he went to the altar, which of course in a Greek Orthodox church is behind that wall, right, the iconostasis, when he went through that to the altar, um, the chalice was still full of wine on the altar, the sanctuary lamp was still burning, the altar had not been moved or destroyed, um, and there's quite a beautiful video where you can see sort of the air come in, but the altar stay exactly the same. Um, and for him, and his sharing it, um, it was about a profound sign of, of hope, of Christ's presence in the midst of the storm. So um, I commend that video to you, it's quite lovely. Thank you for your giving. We hope you'll continue to give through check or online. Uh, you can always give online on our, our Facebook page, We uh, on our website, sorry, not our Facebook page, although you can donate on our Facebook page as well. Um, and uh, we continue to be grateful for your generosity, your giving out of your gratitude for God's gifts um, uh, and supporting this parish and our ministries during this time. Um, again, thank you for your patience. We'll try to make this hymn sound a little bit better. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you at coffee hour after the mass. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. God.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Gregory the Great, and all your saints, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.